Most socialists agree that Karl Marx had a remarkable ability to see the inherent flaws in capitalism, but didn't offer a viable alternative. Like a doctor able to recognize the nature of a disease, but who is unsure how to go about curing it. Marx viewed history not as wars or power struggles between states, but rather how societies organized themselves around labor and the economic classes that resulted. Marx wrote in the beginning of the Communist Manifesto, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. The first of these modes of production was primitive communism, then feudalism, followed by capitalism, which would destroy itself giving birth to socialism and eventually morph into communism. In primitive communism, people were bound by physical constraints like the search for food and shelter, but were also more socially equal. The work and the rewards were shared. After agriculture allowed people to stay in one place, physical constraints were lifted, but new social constraints were imposed. And instead of food being distributed equally, most was given to the new property class, causing most of the population to have to work harder, while members of the ruling class didn't have to work at all. This was feudalism. The American and French Revolution started a domino effect that, for the most part, ended feudalism and gave birth to Western liberal democracies from which capitalism would flourish. Marx defined the working class or proletariat by those who don't own the land on which they work, nor do they own the fruits of their own labor, and the capitalist or bourgeoisie defined by those who own the land and the wealth that others produce. Witnessing this new system firsthand at a factory owned by the father of his friend, Friedrich Engels, Marx was sure capitalism would cannibalize itself because this relation to property would lead to exploitation of the working class in the form of wage labor. Since the proletariat does not own land to cultivate or have access to natural resources, the only choice that they have is to sell their labor or starve. He realized that, like all other socioeconomic systems that came before it, capitalism had planted within it the seeds of its own demise. This is what Karl Marx called conflict theory. Marx saw modern capitalist work during the Industrial Revolution as alienating. State-backed capitalism drove people from their homes into factories, robbing them of their autonomy, freedom, and dignity, stripping them of their humanity, and turning them into interchangeable tools used by the ruling class. Under capitalism, workers had no say in what was produced, how it was distributed, or what was done with the wealth they created. Marx noticed that capitalists drove down wages and ratcheted up productivity, paying the workers little while they themselves got rich. This is what Marx called primitive accumulation, which he regarded as theft, and what the capitalists was stealing was the wealth created by his workforce. Marx argued that the surplus and profit should benefit the workers since, after all, they were the ones who produced it. In Marx's ideal world, there would be no government, no capitalists, just a world where everyone would benefit from their own labor. Marx noted that before the market economy and industrial revolution, people's work had an intrinsic value. If one didn't work, then one didn't have food or shelter. But as a wage worker, Marx argued, it was hard to find meaning in what you do every day because anybody could do it, and if your work doesn't get done, it doesn't matter all that much. As a result, human beings were reduced to cogs and machines, completely disassociated from what they were forced to do all day and who they were as a free, creative individual. But ironically, capitalism would attempt to fill this void by selling us commodities. Marx wrote, The less you are, the more you have. The less you express your own life, the greater your alienated life. The greater your the store of your estranged being. This is what Marx called commodity fetishism. He knew that the capitalist quest for profit came into conflict with the workers' need for a free, dignified existence, and that because of this conflict, capitalist expansion was not sustainable and would exhaust its potential and collapse. Marx predicted that the final stages of capitalism would be marked by developments such as the inability to generate profits at previous levels, and that capitalism would begin to consume the structures that sustain it, driving the poor and working classes deeper into debt and poverty, and undermining the ability of the state to serve the needs of the ordinary citizen. Marx wrote, The executive of the modern state is but a committee for managing the common affairs of the bourgeoisie. Because capitalists reduce wages, Marx understood workers will be unable to afford the goods they themselves produce. This would cause a crisis of abundance. It's why we have more empty homes than homeless people, or why food is tossed out while millions go hungry. It's why an ever-increasing number of people can't afford to buy things they need while being offered more commodities than they could ever use. The irony is that capitalism would produce more than the population would ever need, but that no one would be able to buy it. 
This, Marx understood, would lead to a series of booms and busts, or what we call business cycles. This cycle, Marx knew, would one day come to an end when there were no new markets and no new people left to take on debt. And when that happens, Marx predicted, the scheme falls apart and the system crashes. It would be at this point that capitalism would turn on its so-called free market principles and begin to plunder social institutions. The working class would watch their wages fall, their collective bargaining nullified, their safety net torn, their retirement stolen, and their benefits vanquished, while the capitalists who caused the crash were rewarded beyond the dreams of avarice. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Chris Hedges wrote after the crash of 2008, Marx was keenly aware of capitalism's ability to innovate and adapt, but he also knew that capitalist expansion was not eternally sustainable. And as we witness the denouement of capitalism and the disintegration of globalism, Karl Marx is vindicated as history's most prescient and important critic. Thanks for watching. 